This brings us to section five of the book, Digital Electronic Circuits. And um, digital is very much unlike anything that we've studied to this point. Um, the original goal of digital was to simplify repetitive functions. Those same functions that we perform time and time again in an electronic system. And basically everything in digital is done with either a high voltage or a low voltage. Either an on state or an off state. So all of the magic, all of the money that Bill Gates has made simply boils down to a circuit that's either on or a circuit that's off. It's that simple. Which also means, if I'm doing my math correctly, you all have a 50-50 shot at passing digital. <laughs> because all of the answers will either be a high voltage or a low voltage, so you got a 50-50 shot at it. Actually, it doesn't work out like that, and I'm living proof it doesn't work out like that because I remember when I got, went through my first digital course, I was scratching my head like, this doesn't make any sense. Digital, I'm going to teach digital a little bit different. For some of these chapters, I'm going to use slides, these slides. For some of the chapters, I'm going to deviate and not even use these slides to meet the objectives. Um, coordinating your quiz through the, the class lead, I basically don't want any of you taking any quizzes until I'm done with all the digital lectures. So don't schedule the digital lecture, uh, quizzes for like this week. Schedule them for when I'm all done with digital. Digital, I am also going to allow you to use some tools on your homework, on your quiz, and on your final exam. Those tools will include the use of these computers. You can't use a web browser, but you could use these computers. The two things specifically that you can use is the Windows calculator. And there's a reason why I'm going to have you use that Windows calculator. So you could use your own calculator if you've got digital conversion on it. But the Windows calculators work really, really well for manipulating some of these digital values. And then the other thing I'm going to introduce you to is multi-SIM. In multi-SIM, we're going to use some very specific tools to help us solve these digital problems. There's also going to be a deviation. I'm just full of deviations tonight. There also is going to be a deviation on the quiz. All of you have come to know and love, right, my quizzes. In digital, you're going to be taking a quiz that is not multiple choice. It's going to be a basically fill in the blank. I give you a blank and you fill it in with all and everything and anything that you know about logic gates. And if any part of the answer is wrong, you get it wrong. If there's 33 parts to the question and you get one wrong, you don't get 1 33rd, you get that whole problem wrong. Because you either got it right or you got it wrong. And, and digital is something that we really can't cut corners on because it's prevalent everywhere. The world is digital right now. We're in a digital world. Actually, two years ago at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas that I typically attend on an annual basis, um, that was basically their, cl their claim that now in Consumer Electronics, it's digital. We're totally digital. I mean, there's still some analog applications out there, but the predominance of circuitry out there now is digital. So... With that being said, let's jump into it here. Chapter 32, which deals with the binary number system. Before we get started in this here, who, uh, can you raise your hand? Who here has experience in digital? Have any of you taken any digital classes, courses? No? Couple? Okay. If you did 116, you got some digital. Trust me, you got some digital. So you should find this a breeze. If you haven't taken 116, there's some folks in this classroom that have a distinct advantage over you. 
After completing this chapter, you're going to be able to describe the binary number system. Identify the place value for each bit in a binary number. Convert binary numbers to decimal numbers. Convert decimal numbers to binary numbers. Convert decimal numbers to 8421 BCD code. And convert 8421 BCD code to decimal numbers. Now, they chose using binary numbers for a really important reason. There's only two of them. That was the reason. The binary system is a base 2 system. So, if any of you struggle with this material, I'm going to show no mercy on you because you've been using since birth a number system that is far more complex than the binary number system. We use base 10. And that's actually one of the things that I find intriguing. I enjoy travel. I've traveled all over the world. I've used money that I don't understand. I've spoken to people, well, people have spoken to me in languages that I don't understand. But one of the things that's consistent around this planet is the numbering system, a decimal based system. And I think that probably has something to do with how many fingers and toes we have. Okay? Because again, you're not going to find any other culture that I'm aware of that uses anything other than base 10 numbering system. So the binary number system is a base 2 system. It contains two digits. This is where you got a 50-50 shot at passing this class. Either a 0 or a 1. The position of the 0 or 1 in the number indicates its value within the number. The place value of the digits in a binary number increases by the powers of 2. And we could see that on this table here. This is the decimal number, base 10. And actually, let's go through the decimal. This is going to sound really infantile and stupid, but let's go through it. The first number in decimal is 0. And it's kind of odd because we don't count that way. We don't count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The human computer does. You ever hear that, dude? You ever see him like on Leno or anything? The human computer, this, this dude or the human calculator, whatever they call that dude, human calculator. Any of you seen this guy? I've heard him interviewed on the radio, it's amazing. I've seen him like on Letterman and stuff, they'll bring him out and they'll typically they'll bring out like some, uh, I don't know, cheerleader with a calculator and they'll like give numbers, 4,276.34 times 43. And he, he's got the answer faster than the cheerleader with a calculator. He does so because he's trained his mind to think like a computer. We're all a product of our upbringing and our traditional mathematics background, so we think counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, he counts like a computer. It's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And 0 has significance, especially in machines. So let's go through this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then we go to the number, what we call the number 10, but the number 10 is actually 1 in the 10's column and 0 in the 1's column. That's what makes up the number 10, base 10. Do you agree with me? The number is 11 is 1 in the 10's column, 1 in the 1's column. 10 plus 1 equals 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And again, the ones column goes back to zero, and the tens column increments by one. So now two in the tens column and zero in the ones column. We call that number 20. Does that make sense? I know it sounds kind of silly, but you've got to understand where base 10 really comes from. And 10 is not 10. It's one in the tens column, zero in the ones column. So now binary... <laughs> Well, it's either going to be a 0 or a 1, or a 0 and a 1, or a 0 and a 1. So 
what we could look at here is the ones column. It's 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. We see it keeps repeating itself because those are the only two combinations it could have. So the number 0, the good news is the number 0 in decimal is still the number 0 in binary. The number 1 in decimal is the number 1 in binary. But the number 2 in decimal now is 1 in the 2's column, 0 in the 1's column. So, the answer to 1 plus 1 is not 2. The answer to 1 plus 1 in binary is 1, 0. Does that make sense? So 2 plus 1 equals 3. 2 in the 2's column, 1 in the 1's column. Now, after we've gone through this sequence, of course we have to go to 0 here. We have to go to 0 here, so now we increment 1 in the 4's column. 4 plus 0 plus 0 equals 4. 4 plus 1 equals 5. 4 plus 2 equals 6. 4 plus 2 plus 1 equals 7. Then we increment to our 8's column. Does that make sense? So make sure you can draw this on a piece of scratch paper, because I guarantee you, you will deceive me in the future. I'll ask you some basic questions like this, and it's easy to get tripped up with. You end up getting tripped up, just draw it down on your scratch paper. There's no harm in that. Now, in order for us to, we, we, we are a decimal people. We are a decimal people. We use base 10. So in order for us to use binary to count the numbers that we like to use, how many places do I need to use in binary? No, I haven't defined bits and bytes yet. How many places do I need in binary to represent the highest number that we count to in decimal before we increment to the tens column? How many places do I need? Four. Okay? So the number nine here is one zero zero one. One in the fours column, or excuse me, one in the eights column, one in the ones column. Eight plus one equals nine. So this is what we call BCD, binary coded decimal. The highest number you will ever count up to in binary coded decimal is going to be the number 9. Because after the number 9, what's next? But do we call it 10 or do we call it 1, 0? One in the tens column, 0 in the ones column, decimal. So we in binary coded decimal will never go past the number 9. So this could be binary coded decimal, this could be BCD, this could be BCD, 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 BCD. When I'm saying BCD, I mean also what the book calls 8421 code. Because we use the 8's columns, the 4's, the 2's, and the 1's. Not in BCD. Using four, using four places, you could go as high as 15. But in BCD, we can only go as high as the number 9. Now, you bring up a really outstanding point. You're a smart guy. You're like these computer engineers of the past. They said, well, you know, we're already using this four-digit system of binary counting all the way up to the number 9 in decimal. But we're not using this combination for 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, or 15. So we've got all of these different combinations that are going unused. So what they came up with is another language called hexadecimal. That's where, this is where it gets really good, folks. Instead of using numbers, they start to use letters of the alphabet. In hexadecimal, instead of after the number 9 going to 10, they call this A. 
they call this 11B, C, D, E, F. F is as high as hexadecimal goes because after 1, 1, 1, 1, and we increment that, then we go to 1 in the 16s column. So if you've ever heard of hexadecimal before, and it's, it's very common in coding to use hexadecimal because in the architecture of digital systems, we've got four bits. We might as well use the full size of those four bits. If we're communicating, if we're getting input or providing an output, then let's keep it decimal because that's the human interface. But inside the machine, you've got all of these different combinations that are going unused, so we use hexadecimal. And I'll show you hex in a minute. Does that make sense? BCD code is an 8421 code. Consists of four binary digits. It's used to represent only the numbers 0 through 9. 8421 designation refers to binary weight of 4 bits. 8421. But of course you caught it already. You could call, count all the way up to 15 with 4 bits. In summary, the binary number system is the simplest number system, so there's no excuses. This is hard. This is difficult. Contains two digits, 0 and 1, used to represent data for digital and computer systems. Binary data represented by binary digits called bits, and bit, the term bit, is derived from binary digits. So in defining bit, the other term we should define, since we're talking about it, is byte, B-Y-T-E. And one byte is actually equal to four, uh, two nibbles. True. And a digital nibble is actually four bits. So four bits equals a nibble, two nibbles equals a byte. Or eight bits equals a byte. So when you talk about your hard drive at home holding 500 gigabytes, that's 500 gig times 8. That's how many bits it can hold. 500 times 8. It's disturbing. It's a lot of ones and zeros that can be held on those, on those platters inside that hard drive. The place value of each higher digit's position in a binary number is increased by the power of 2. So 1's column 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. Any of these numbers sound familiar? Any computer geeks out there? Why do those numbers sound familiar if you play around with computers? Computer architecture and digital architecture is based on binary and the binary progression. So you're never going to have, you know, a thousand different colors. It's always going to be 1024 or 512 or memory. It's always going to be in those increments because they're binary increments. The largest value that can be represented by a given number of places is base 2 is 2 to the nth minus 1 where n represents the number of bits. Don't forget the zero place, because now zero has significance. In digital, zero has significance. Before, zero had no significance. How much money do you have? Nothing. Okay. If you've got no money in your Bank of America checking account, it doesn't mean there's no data. It means that your account is at 0, 0.00. <laughs> Okay, And in the computers, in the mainframe computers that keep track of your accounts, it's going to be 0, 0.00. The value of a binary digit can be determined by adding the product of each digit to its place value. Fractional numbers are represented by negative powers of 2. To convert from a decimal number to a binary number, divide the decimal number by 2, writing down the remainder after each division. The remainder is taken in reverse order, form the binary number. Do this on your homework to try it. 
do it on your homework to try it. But then correct yourself using a computer. The 8421 code, a binary coded decimal code, is used to represent 0 through 9. The advantage of BCD code is ease of converting between decimal and binary forms of a number. Human interface. All the numbers we deal with, at least I deal with, are 0 through 9. Any questions on anything that we covered in this chapter? Let me go ahead and show you now. Under accessories is the calculator. This is your standard Windows calculator. If you have this when you call it up, this isn't going to do much for you. Okay? Go to View. You could select Scientific, which is a great scientific calculator if you're a scientific. Or you could go Programmer. This is the mode that you want to be in. Now you've got these options here. Right now, the default for this was to come up in decimal. So, in decimal, look at the numbers that are actually activated on my keypad. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Wow, decimal. 0 through 9. Make sense? So here I could go 1 plus 1 equals 2, plus 1 equals 3, plus 1 equals 4. Get the idea? And look at what's happening on our screen at the same time. You see that? Let me actually start subtracting one. See how it's counting in binary for us there? And it's counting in groups of four. Binary coded decimal. So let me keep incrementing it now. Plus one, five. What's going to happen next? 15 plus 1. Very good. So this is straight binary. This is what we call straight binary. So as an example, let me um, clear this out. And let's, uh, you know, 9,356,874. Well, there it is in binary for us. This is straight binary. So if you start counting from the left, zeros, twos, four, eights, 16, 32, 64, get the drift? So that's a nice thing about this. It'll give you the display in straight binary in addition. If you're doing BCD or 8421 code, you're going to have to keep track of that and know that 9 is as high as the number that you could go to. The other nice thing about this, let me clear that out, is I could go to binary. And when I select a binary, look at the number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is disabled. The only two keys on my keypad that are enabled are the 0 and the 1. Got a 50 50 shot at getting it right. So what you could do is plug in the values. 1, 1, 1, 1. What's that equal to in decimal? So I could go to decimal and select decimal right here, and it gives me my answer, 15. I could go to binary. Let's clear that out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 32. The neat thing about this, see how high it could go? How high can it go? 64. 64 bits. The reason I'm showing you this calculator 
is your calculator can't do that. Not that I'm aware of. There may be a way of getting it to do it, but it's not going to be very pleasant. So this will allow you to simultaneously look at the contents of 64 bits. Now I'm going to convert this. And we use 64-bit processing, right? We use 64-bit processing in computers now. So how many different combinations are there in decimal of that? Crap. I messed up. I went one too many. That's why I got the ding. Let me go back to binary. Ones are cheap. Slow down. One, two, three, 62, 63, 64. How many different decimal combinations? Why is it coming up with that? Why come it do that? Minus one. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm doing something wrong. Anyway, let's go back to straight binary though. And if you want to know the how many different combinations there are in a 16-bit system. 16-bit system, decimal. 65,536 because zero has significance. So that's how many different combinations there are. So like, what's the big one? Here, who, who is like a computer fanatic here? Who does like stuff with computers? Anybody do any color manipulation or any stuff like that? What's the big one? Is it 24-bit color? Isn't that one of the options? 32? Okay, 32-bit color. Oh, I'm in decimal. <laughs> okay, there's 32 bits. How many different combinations, color combinations will this give you? And uh, the human eye can only perce small perception of colors. But yeah. You could set your computer to give you this resolution of color. So does everybody understand how this works? The other nice thing about this is doing the conversions. So remember that straight binary and hex? Let me go to hex right now, and I'm going to count in hex. And look at this. When I enable hex, now I've got the letters A, B, C, D, E, and F enabled on my keyboard. So I'm going to go... 1 plus 1. See how I'm counting up? What's going to come after the number 9 in hex? A. What's going to come after the letter F in hex? 1, 0. Very good. 1, 0. Oops. Added something wrong. See how we're counting up there? So play around with this. You want to get good at using this calculator because if I ask you questions on the quiz, you, you could use this calculator and answer the questions. I do want you to familiarize yourself with the division process that's outlined in the book, just so you know how to do it longhand. But quite frankly, if I hired you as a technician, you start, you know, you open up these scrolls and you're, what the heck are you doing? I'm doing these conversions. Use a calculator, okay? Use the Windows calculator. It'll solve all your problems. Also, there's another um, format here. It's called Octal. I used to work on a computer in the Navy and ultimately went on and became an instructor at the school for a computer that communicated in Octal. So when I go to Octal, only the numbers 0 through 7 are highlighted. So the way that this is going to work is let's count. Want to count in Octal? 1 plus 1 equals 2 plus 1. Three, four, five, six. There's seven. What's going to come after seven? Anybody want to take a wild guess? One, zero. One, zero. So the highest number that you count to is seven. 
and then you go to zero, one, one, zero. Make sense? Why was it an octal system? Well, it was obviously based on in three bits, three bits per register. It was an early computer, robust computer. A lot of I.O. channels, built like a tank, worked fine. Any questions on conversions? Okay. Let's go ahead and take a uh, brief, a 10 minute break. At six, uh, at uh, 10 minutes after six, we're gonna come back, we're gonna talk about basic logic gates.